when I go to the theater or I see a film, uh, what I find most engaging is when I feel an actor is after something and that it engages me because in Western drama our history of literature is about actors in crisis going after what they want. And so oftentimes you see really good actors creating a character, but that that's all they do. Then it's sort of, oh, I'm this character and I'm limping around or I'm doing my voice funny. But unless they're involving the other person, unless they're putting their focus on the other person and going after what they want, then I'm, I don't feel like I'm going along in the journey. Then it just feels like they're on their journey doing something interior. Once it, 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 the focus is out, then I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm hooked in too. So that's what I'm looking for when I go to the theater. And that's, for me, also, I mean, when I was trained, I, I you know, we did a lot of work on touching your emotions, creating a character, all those really basic good things to, to know. But what I wasn't given is, yeah, so what are you going to do with it? Well, practical aesthetics goes back to Stanislavski, who was all about finding your character's action. So they've broken it down to really four easy steps. What is literally happening in the scene? So what is the scene about? They call it a popcorn moment. So if you go to get popcorn in the movie and you come back and you, and you say, oh, what, what's happening? Your friend says, oh, okay, now he's about to ask her to marry her. Boom, literally that's what's happening. Not, she's feeling this way, he's wanting this, or he... Second step is, what does the character want? What does your character want from the other character? Or what does your character want the other character to do? So, Streetcar Named Desire. Blanche wants Mitch to propose marriage. The third step is your action. So how would you in that scene, you, not, not Blanche, but you, get somebody to propose marriage to you. And that is your action. So it could be to, to get somebody to drop their defenses. It could be to get someone to open their heart. It could, could be to earn someone's trust. But all of those things are things that you can do. And so that's what Meisner talked about when he said, living truthfully under the imaginary circumstances. The imaginary circumstances are that we are in New Orleans, my name is Mitch, your name is Blanche, that we're out by some pavilion, that, we're, that we don't have an audience, that we don't have lights, that we don't, this isn't a stage, all of those things. The thing that I can truthfully do is, or that you could truthfully do, is to get me to open my heart or to gain my trust. So that's, that's the action. And then the last one is the as if, which is just Stanislavski's magic if. It's as if you were what? So to put yourself, to engage the imagination. So it might be, it might be easy for somebody to say, yes, I would like somebody to marry me. But if you say, okay, you're playing a vengeful uh, tyrant and you want somebody to, you want to murder somebody so you can ascend the throne. Well, I've never wanted to murder anybody. Yeah, but you've probably been really angry in your life. So as if what? As if, or you've wanted something badly enough that you, you've wanted an audition badly enough so that you don't care about all those other people you're in the room audition. You want that thing. So it's as if what? So, yeah. Script analysis is not at all dissimilar to learning your lines. It's your homework. It's, it's your preparation work. It's to, to train you how to think before you act. Where Meisner technique or repetition comes in is teaching you to act before you think. And practical aesthetics combines the two. So you prepare yourself. You, you're learning script analysis just so you have some tools to prepare your script. So you know what's happening in the script. You can break it down by beats. You can look at, at a, a protagonist's arc, a through line, to see what is it that they want through the whole thing, and what is it that I want 
in each individual scene. But without the repetition, without uh, um, voice work, without um, knowing how to relax your body to, to move freely, to, to focus on the other person, and to get in touch with your own emotions, then it just means nothing. And so, you, so, so the technique has to be there also. And what's nice is that you've already prepared so many of these students with that technique so that they can be there emotionally. And then you combine that with going after something and you have beauty. <laughs>method in the world right now because it combines technique and script analysis. So, so it gives an actor a tool to work with or tools to work with. Oftentimes in film, in television and commercial work, you'll go on, on an audition and or even to do the work. A director is not coming necessarily from a theater background. So they're not going to be able to coach you along. They're going to say, okay, you know, 7 a.m. Tuesday, be ready. Which means, yes, you're going to learn your lines, but yes, you're going to have to develop a character from the script that you're given. And to break it down into realizing what your character wants from the other character and how you're going to go about doing it. So oftentimes if you're on an audition and somebody says, show me something different, that you'll know what they're talking about. So that you'll be able to make a choice. Oh, okay. So instead of mm, opening someone's heart, I'm going to get somebody to cut the shit right now. I'm going to get somebody to pay attention. So those are two very different actions. So then a director could say, wow, 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 doing something, give me something different. In teaching in the university, uh, the beginning classes are usually in the States? Yeah, back in the States when I was teaching at the University of South Florida. The beginning classes are often to, to, to show uh, or to lead a student into who they are, to go inside, to, to, to become vulnerable, to become present, to get in touch with your emotional life, to get in touch with your imagination. But then what do you do with that? And so the advanced classes that I usually teach back in the States are this, are practical aesthetics, because students have had a beginning repetition so so they can they can be there they can be present with each other they've done character work they've engaged in the imagination they've gotten in touch with their emotional life and then they come in and say what do I do with this so that's the practical aesthetics I think it's really important in a classroom in theater in general and in, in, in this world to really take it seriously because there are hundreds if not thousands of people who want the same role that you're after, who want to be doing the same thing that you're doing, who want that success, and who are there to take your place if, you're, if you show up late to auditions, if you come. Uh, and this is something that is, you know, that people really need to want to do this because it's so competitive. And if you really want to do something, then be on time. Then <laughs> then be prepared, then be focused, and focusing on your, your, your partners or on your colleagues while they're working train, trains you not only in your own focus, but also it's, it's, it's giving. It's giving your attention to, it's giving your energy to, and that's what acting is. So, so when I watch a couple of people in repetition, I'm always picking one and I'm mentally repeating with them. So that I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm not, oh, uh, yeah, what's going on? Okay. Uh, oh, my turn? Great. That I, I'm, I'm there with the class. I'm part of it. I'm taking part in it. And, and I hope that everybody does that. Because you really want your body, your mind, your, your soul to always feel right there, ready. And not, oh, I'm tense, I'm ready. But I'm here present. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've, especially in today's world with the internet and work and this and that, you know, it's, everything takes us away from the present. 
And I, I've, I've recommended to students that they, they, they do yoga, tai chi, aikido, zen, anything that will teach presence. But it's a really great practice just to be in class, be there, and really commit yourself to, I'm going to be here for two or three hours, or however long it is. It's good training.